Hey, good morning. It's already been a great day here at the Highlands, a great weekend. We celebrated a few hundred volunteers yesterday and to show appreciation because we know that what God's called us to is bigger than one person, one team, and it's, it's huge. And so we're thrilled to partner with you in serving and seeing people baptize, seeing people say yes to God. There's just already been a great spirit today in our services. Now, I've got to be honest with you. I have a love-hate relationship with fishing, with fishing. Now, I have to warn you, I'm about to tell you a very gross story. Hopefully you didn't just eat breakfast, or you will eat breakfast after this, but here, here we go. When I was young, my dad, uh, he always had dreams of, like, he and I going camping, and I've been pretty open with my thoughts about camping, that I don't love it. And so when I was in about fourth or fifth grade, my dad, at our church we went to, there was like a men and boys or father-son camp out that, that we went to, and so my dad was so excited because my sister and my mom— despise camping. Like, they're, they're not campers, and so my dad said, all right, they're hopeless, but I have, one, I have one more shot. Here we go. Maybe you and I can connect. So he got a tent. He got all the camping gear. He got fishing poles. He got me, like, a little Rambo-style knife that I thought was the coolest, and so we get there for fishing, and, uh, or we get there for camping, rather, and I realized quickly, because I was wise beyond my years, how I did not like camping. I did not like camping. And so uh, my dad says, you know, well, oh, son, we're going to try some new things. In fact, let's go fishing. And we're going to go fishing for the first time, and we're going to go, and we're going to catch fish. And so my dad made some, I think, eggs and bacon or something like that that, that morning over the campfire. And we're going out to this, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a lake or stream. As you can tell, I'm not much of an outdoorsman. But it was a, some, some water around that we thought was fish. And so there was this huge boulder. It was, this is a campsite a couple hours away from here, a huge boulder that we crawled up on, and, and I thought that was fun. And we get our fishing pole and throw it out there to try to catch some fish. Well, I learned quickly how boring fishing was. And I, for those real fishermen that are watching in person, I don't know how you do it. I don't have the patience to be a fisherman. And so I remember as a little 9 or 10-year-old boy, I'm thinking like, well, Dad, there's got to be more to this. No, son, just be patient. We're going to catch something. And all of a sudden, like probably a half hour into this, I began to feel sick. It's all the smells that were going on and maybe a combination of the, the breakfast I just had and some of the smells of the lake slash stream slash water, whatever it was. Like all of these things kind of just began to make me feel sick where all of a sudden I said, Dad, I'm not feeling good. I need to go back. No, we're, we're good. Like this is fun. We're bonding. Dad, I don't care about bonding. I'm not feeling good. I need to go back. Dad, son, we're fine. We're fine. And all of a sudden it happened. I threw up all over this rock this whole rock was covered with my vomit. To even get worse, chunks started falling into the water. And do you know what happened? Fish came up. I was like, this is how you catch fish. So for fishermen, I have a tip for you. Like, there you go. There's some bait. And then the love part is recently, my, I have some friends on the East Coast we went fishing with a few years ago, so my daughters like to do that. So we went locally, got some fishing poles and went. But let me tell you, if, however your perspective on fishing is, it plays a, a huge role in our story here today in Luke chapter 5. And, and so let's, let's start there in Luke 5. If you have your Bible or perhaps even uh, the app on a church app, you can open up the sermon notes. We're going to go old school and read the King James Version of this story in Luke chapter 5. And there's a great message here from Jesus' life as he teaches the disciples a very important lesson. Luke chapter 5, here's, here's Luke's recording of the story. He writes this, As it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, also known as Peter, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And Jesus sat down and taught the people of the ship. Now we got to stop there before we go any further because there's a very important part of the story. We just see Peter, Simon Peter's very first act. It was this small step of obedience. So Peter, he's in his boat. He has not caught anything. He's washing his nets. He's cleaning up for the next day. Hopefully they can catch something tomorrow. And Jesus says, hey, Peter, I need your boat. I want you to launch out just a little bit farther because I have a whole group of people that I need to teach. They want to hear me, and I need to go out on the water so that I can project uh, the teaching that I want to share with these people. And you know what Jesus did? Okay, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what's going on, but let's do it. Okay, sure. And all of a sudden now, what begins is this whole cycle 
of Peter's life being changed. You know, I, I wonder what small step of obedience you and I have in our life that God's calling us to. One of my greatest fears is to miss out on God's blessings because I wasn't willing to take that fall, uh, first small step of obedience. And so Peter, he thrusts the boat out. He pushes out just a little bit. And that's the very first step of obedience we find. But look in verse number four. Now when Jesus had left speaking, he said unto Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. So here's what happens. Now, now Jesus is like, okay, Peter, you launched out a little bit. That was good. That helped me. And we were able to teach. Now we're done. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go even deeper into the water. And I want you to let down your nets. Now, this is contrary to Peter's training, because remember, Peter was the seasoned fisherman. He didn't just fish for a hobby. He fished for a livelihood. And Peter had been kept fishing all day, and he caught nothing. This was a wasted day for him. He's frustrated. He's tired. He's exhausted. He's exasperated. He's cleaning his nets. He, he gave up. He, he threw in the towel. And now Jesus is saying, go deeper. But Peter would have said, in his mind at least, like, that's not how this works. Like, we don't go deeper to catch. In fact, in this time of the day, you catch fish in the shallow part of the water. And so everything that Jesus was telling Peter to do was opposite of his training. In fact, Peter's like, and by the way, you're a carpenter. What does a carpenter know about fishing? But look what Peter does as we see a pattern here. In verse number five, Peter, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. We have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I, I love what Peter's response here was. Because Peter all of a sudden says, all right, I don't know if he was exhausted, hopeless, desperate. He was like, what I was doing didn't work, so let me just try what you're going to do, and let's see what happens. And, and I love what happens here is because Peter shows a very small amount of faith. I don't know about you, but I've often fooled myself into thinking that I need, like, Moses-sized faith of, like, parting the Red Sea, or going to Pharaoh, let my people go, or getting up the stones like David in my sling to kill giants, and I'm looking for this huge act of faith, and Jesus is saying, all I need, he says this in the Gospels, is a small mustard seed of faith. You and I focus on the volume of faith, but Jesus is focusing on the vessel of faith. Where he's saying, hey, it doesn't matter how much faith, I just need you to step into faith. And so Peter's like, I almost feel like Peter's like, well, whatever, like, let's do it. I, I, that's fine. And then Jesus says, I can bless that. I can bless your faith. And so we have here this story of Jesus saying, all I need is a mustard seed. Mustard seeds, by the way, are some of the smallest seeds in the world. And he needs your small step of faith. Just like Peter. And look what happens next in verse number six. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Now, get this, get this. This fisherman who had caught nothing, who was going to go home to his family and said, I'm sorry, but we can't eat because I caught nothing today. All of a sudden, he, he makes one small act of obedience. Okay, Lord, I'll step out. I'll push the boat out a little bit farther. And then Jesus says, okay, launch in the deep and drop down the nets. Ah, that doesn't make sense. That's not what they taught me in Fishing 101. That doesn't make sense of what you're asking me to do. And now all of a sudden, he has not one, but two ships that are so full of fish, the boats are sinking. This guy just hit the jackpot. Like, he can take a few months off now and go live life and have a vacation because of this incredible catch. All because of a small step of obedience, a small seed of faith. And look what Jesus did. As we talk about this idea of this story and launching, I want to encourage you, maybe there's something in your life that God's been calling you to act on. A small step of obedience. Maybe it's walking across the street to invite a neighbor to church or tell them about the love of Jesus. Maybe it's a, a coworker that you know has been struggling that you can offer to have lunch or pray with them. May, maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's a wayward child that you, you have not had that conversation because you're, they're going to come back. Maybe God's calling you to step out. And maybe God's calling you to have the small seed of faith. Has Peter stepped out? Has Peter had faith? God gave him two ships full of fish. But look what happens next. Because in my mind, in my, you know, capitalistic American mind, I'm like, that is an amazing haul. Like, look at this, all this fish that I caught. But look what happens, Peter's response in verse number eight. He says this, when Simon Peter saw it, 
he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, because I am a sinful man, O Lord. And then he goes on in verse number 9, For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought, the catch of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, future disciples, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And look what Jesus' response to them in verse number 11 was. We'll talk about this later in our message. Jesus said unto Peter, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. What a story where Peter is a regular guy, a fisherman. He does two small things that separates him sometimes from our life. He takes a small step of obedience, and he exercises a small seed of faith. And God gave him two huge ships full of fish. But even more than that, we'll talk about this in a moment, he gives them a calling. Here's what I want to share with you today as we talk, think about this idea of launching out into the deep. God's called our church in this season to launch out into the deep. For 32 years, we have been helping people say yes to God, and God has done an extraordinary thing in that season. Thousands and thousands of people have said yes to God. But we feel in this new season that God's continuing to call us in that, but is expanding our mission and expanding our vision. We don't want to just stick with helping people say yes to God. We want people to not just stay there, but to grow deeper. We want people to become rooted disciples of Jesus. That's why Pastor Jim, just a few moments ago, encouraged us to join Emotionally Healthy Discipleship, where this is a key part of becoming rooted. But there's another step which I'll share in a moment that we want to give you as another way of being rooted. Let me share with you, as we jump into our message, as we unpack a few of these things I want to share with you, let's look at three reminders as we launch out. Three reminders in this new season for us to launch out and to remind ourselves of how God is going to bless us moving forward. Here, here's the first reminder, and that's this. Your obedience is more important than your comfort. Your obedience is more important than your comfort. Go, go back to verse number four, where Jesus, has he's been teaching, now he tells Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Now this was contrary to everything that Peter had been taught, had been learning, and even had been doing. But if you remember through our Sermon on the Mount series this past summer, as we were looking at the teachings of Jesus often, Jesus was teaching us countercultural ways of living our life. Jesus is often asking us to go opposite of what we are called or what we are taught or what we are We think we need to do in this cu current culture that we're in Jesus is teaching us to go deeper to go more and so Jesus is showing Peter Okay, Peter, you've been comfortable You you went to the same place you you had the same nets you had the same uh, kind of plan and nothing happened And so Jesus has he's showing us this idea that you and I cannot focus on our comfort But we're creatures of habit like, we like what we like, how we like it, when we like it, when we want it. We just like those. And me in particular, I love rhythms and routine. I'm more of a homebody. I like being at home. Like, my wife and I have a little sign in our family room that says, let's stay home. Like, we just like being at home. Like, we like our habits and routines. And, and maybe that's how you are as well. And we don't like people to tell us what to do, how to change things. That, that's the current argument, even our uh, climate right now, political or otherwise, that we don't mind about anti or for, but when people tell us what to do, we are like, oh, I don't really like that. Because we don't like this, and we don't like people telling us what to do, but Jesus says, hey, if you want something, if you want my blessing, obey. Amen. Obedience is far more important than comfort. It's like this fishing rod. Uh, this is not my fishing rod, by the way. Um, you probably could tell that. I was told earlier that I, didn't even know, I don't even know how to hold this fishing rod. Um, and so I have a fishing rod, but I was afraid that the real fishermen in our church would make fun of me and say, why are you bringing a child's toy to the service? Like, can't you get a real man's rod? So I went to the most seasoned fisherman I know and asked to borrow one of his rods. Thank you, Pastor Billy, for this rod. Pastor Billy's trying to make me legit, but it's really hopeless. He was even telling me this morning about this is like a tuna rod or something, and here's this, and he's like, say these things, it's going to help people, and I'm like, Pastor Billy, I, I can't pretend. They already know. Like, they know I'm hopeless, and I appreciate you make, trying to make me look good, but I'm beyond, beyond repair. So apparently this is some, and by the way, he even took the hook off of this. He childproofed the fishing pole for me. <laughs> Pastor Billy is looking out for me. Because if there's anybody that would get hooked by a fishing pole in front of people, it would be me. 
But think about this fishing pole, and perhaps you like fishing, or, or think about your favorite hobby, whatever you like to do. Fishermen, many times, they, they can get sucked into the same routine. They like their favorite pole, they use their favorite bait, they have their favorite spot, they use their favorite spot on the boat, they have to go to the same lake, they have to do everything the same, they like the same fishing spots. But here's where we're going this fall as a church. We're going to change our fishing spots. The call for you is this season to change the way that you fish, to launch out deeper, to be willing to step out in faith and say, God, I have been doing it here forever, but you know what? This fall, I'm going to go over here and do this. I want a new fishing spot. Some of you have been saved. You've been Christians for 10, 20, 30 years, and you've been doing the same thing over and over and over. Jesus is calling you to launch out into the deep. Now, many times you and I, we have our creature of habit. We like our comfort. We like our pull. We like this. But Jesus is calling us in to more. So, church, I have a new fishing spot for you this fall. You see behind me a, a living room set, and we're going to use this a little bit more next week as we talk more about life groups. But our new fishing spot this fall is life groups. We are encouraging every person in our church to join a life group. Now, if you haven't uh, caught it by now, I hope you understand, I am not satisfied with our church just coming on a Sunday morning once a week or watching online for an hour a week. That is not enough to become a rooted disciple of Jesus. And so what we're calling our church in this fall to do is this. Join a life group. Now, you might ask, what is a life group? What does that mean? That sounds weird or scary, but let me just share with you what it is, and we'll talk more about it next week. A life group is just simply a group of people perhaps in the same life stage. Maybe you're empty nesters, or maybe you have young kids, or maybe you're single adults, but you have some things in common that you gather around every week, and you check in with each other. You text, you pray, you have spiritual conversations, perhaps you do a right now media study, or you go through a book, but you have some contact outside this place with someone in this church every single week. Now, for some of you, that's a new fishing spot. For some of you, you like coming to maybe a larger church to kind of slip in, slip out, because you don't want to be known or seen. But I want you to know that we see you, and we want you to be seen. We want you to be prayed for. We want you to be supported and cared for. And a life group is this perfect way that you can come together with other believers in this church to meet for coffee, to, to meet at a home, to meet each week to pray for. So, so here's my big ask for you. I'm asking you to try out life groups for one season. The end of this month in September is beginning an eight-week season that will end before Thanksgiving, and we're going to encourage you over these next couple of Sundays that you would join a life group with other believers. Perhaps you're married, and maybe you get together a few other couples, and you join and talk about parenting, or talk about marriage, or talk about the workplace, because maybe you work in aerospace or another, uh, you know, similar industry, but you would get together with other people. The Bible talks about community throughout scriptures. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron, and there is safety in the multitude of counselors. And we'll talk more next week about some of the, the nitty-gritty, the details of what life groups are, but let me encourage you, church, to find a new fishing spot. Now, here's, here's my challenge to you. Give us one season. Do an eight-week season, and if you hate your group, if they were mean, if they didn't, you didn't like it, I want you to come back to me, and I will go punch them. No, I won't punch them, but I'm not supposed to say that because I said that last service and they gasped and I was like, I should not take that out. But the offer still stands. I will punch them. Or I will take a fishing rod and hit them. I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about violence this morning, but I'm passionate about you joining a life group because it's so important for us to grow deeper together. And so remember, your obedience is more important than your comfort. This past Thursday, we had a over a hundred and something, 20 ladies or so gathered together, and they're in tables, and they're going through book studies, and, and they're doing, it was, I'm not even a lady, and I was excited about what God was doing with the ladies' ministry. Like, there was an amazing energy, and what God was doing this past Thursday, and that's happening, and we're going to have other groups that are meeting in homes, and doing Bible studies, and doing various things, but let me encourage you, don't miss it, because God's calling you, God's calling us to go deeper, and to launch out into the deep. But not only is your obedience more important than your comfort, but let me, let, you, let me give you the second reminder, and that's this. Your rewards are a direct result of your obedience. I, I love what happens with Peter. He says this. When he launches out into the deep, he hasn't caught anything. He drops down their nets, and their nets break. 
What an amazing uh, just story of blessing. Now, I know that we don't obey to get, we obey to grow, but who doesn't like rewards? Have you ever noticed that every single, like, fast food or restaurant or store has their own rewards app? Like, you can look for dog food, and there's, like, a rewards app for that. Like, my oldest daughter is on top of this. She has, like, a full page on her phone of, like, rewards apps. Like, we'll be somewhere, and, and she's like, Dad, scan this. Like, Dad, here's a coupon. Dad, here, here's a reward. And I'm like, what? I didn't even know that they had this. But then I realized my daughter is living her best life because she's getting her rewards with me paying the bill. Like, this is brilliant on her part. Like, she gets all the stars, and she gets all the rewards, and I'm the one footing the bill. But we love our rewards, and, and what the idea here is that when we step out in faith, when we step out in obedience, God does reward you because it's directly tied to your obedience. But let me share with you the third reminder to kind of tie this together. Not only is your, result, your reward a result of your direct obedience, but your spiritual growth, and here's our final reminder, your spiritual growth is the most important reward. Now, I've read this story numerous times, and my first thought always when I read this story is, these fishermen just hit the jackpot. They, they, they're set for a while. They have, two, do, they have two boats that are sinking because of how much fish they caught, and the Bible tells us that they left it and followed Jesus. Because here's the deal. When you truly meet Jesus, when you connect with him in a deep, personal way, when you step into what he's wanting you to do, the other stuff doesn't matter. You see, the disciples, they didn't get caught up in what they, in the catch. They got caught up in their calling. I, I love what happens in verse number 11. Jesus says to us uh, in uh, the last part, he says, Hey, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. You see, you and I, we can get caught up with the catch, but forget about our calling. But the disciples knew. Yeah, we've got two boats full of fish, but that is nothing in comparison to following Jesus. So let me encourage you, as you obey, God's going to bless you. But it's not about the tangible blessing. It's not about uh, maybe a larger bank account, or a better home, or a promotion. Although those things perhaps could come, what matters is that you have found your calling. And let me tell you, my role here at this church is to encourage you, to equip you with our team, to step into your calling. Because your calling is more important than the catch. And so Jesus, as he leads these disciples, as he uh, shows them this miracle, help them understand that the two boats of fish paled in comparison to becoming a rooted disciple of Jesus. And so church, the call for these next few weeks in this season is very simple. Will you launch into the deep? Or will you just grab your favorite pole, read the same thing, do the same activities, kind of go to the same place, and just fish in the same spot? Or will you launch out into the deep and say, God, I'm an introvert. God, I don't know about getting around people, but I, if this is going to help me grow as a Christian, becoming a rooted disciple of Jesus, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it, and I'm going to step out in faith. And here's, here's what I can promise you. God will bless it. It takes a small act of obedience, a small seed of faith for God to bless you. Just like Peter. P Peter, uh, he had all these blessings, and he realized that, you know what? I'm going to forsake all of that, and I'm going to follow the one who blessed. I love this idea as we think about us as a church. God's calling us to some extraordinary things. But as I shared yesterday with our volunteers, that it, this is bigger than one person. It's bigger than Amy and myself. It's bigger than, than our staff. This is huge. God is calling us to reach this area for Jesus. And do you know when we're done with a mission? Have you ever thought about, okay, when is the church done? Well, the church is done when everybody in our area knows about Jesus. And last I checked, that is not the case. Scroll through Facebook, look at the scanner pages, see the news, and you're like, this community needs Jesus. But even if everyone were to, in our community, know Jesus, then God's called us to reach the world. So here's the point. Our mission will never be finished until we see Jesus in heaven. So what that means for us now is to be rooted disciples and reach all that we can to catch all of the men, all of the women that we can with the love of Jesus, with his gospel, to make sure that we live our life in such a way that will make a difference, not just now, but for eternity. And it starts with us as a church saying, you know what? We're going to get uncomfortable. I, I don't know if I like the idea of going to someone's house or having conversations about 
spiritual things. I don't know if that's my, my thing, but you know what? Being uncomfortable is God's thing, and he's calling you to step out. He's calling you to launch deeper. He's calling you to fish in a different spot. So eight weeks, that's all we're asking right now, and I, I promise you, based on what I've read in God's word, that God will bless your faithfulness. He will bless your faith. He will bless your obedience, and you'll see this path to becoming a real disciple like you have never seen before. Some of you have been coming to this church for a long time. Some of you have been coming longer than I've even been here, but let me tell you, it's now time to go deeper. It's now time to move to a different spot, to drop our nets down and see what God has done. So the question, church, is this. We're moving forward. We are going into this expanded vision that God's given to us. So the question I want you to reflect on is this. Will you move with us? Will you go with us? Will you launch deeper? Will you let down the nets and see what God will do? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we wrap up our time together? And perhaps you're watching with us online, and even there in your family room, living room, office, bedroom, kitchen, wherever you are, take a moment of reflection right now. Because here's the call for our church this fall. Will you go deeper with us? Will you be uncomfortable with us? Will you say, God, I don't know all that you're doing, but I'm excited and I'm going to take a step? Because let's be honest, if you don't move with us, then the vision that God's given to us isn't going to go very far because we need you. So as we move forward, we're asking you to move with us. As we launch deeper, launch deeper with us. As we change our fishing spot, change with us. As we figure out new ways to reach this community with the love of Jesus, move with us. Be willing to change the pole, change the spot, change the bait. Be willing to say, I'm going to do everything I can to catch people with the love of Jesus. Don't forget about the calling that God has for you. Now, perhaps you've been joining us online or maybe even a person and you're like, okay, I, I hear some of that, but I don't even really know Jesus on a personal level. And let me tell you, that's the first step. In order to launch out, you have to have that connection with Jesus. And here at the Highlands, we say it's, it's helping people say yes to God, that you in your own individual self would say, God, I need you. Forgive me. We've had people already today say yes. And I want to make an opportunity for you. If you're joining us online, you can pray with us in just a moment, wherever you are, because God will hear you. But if you are in this worship center, if you are in person, you would do me the absolute honor to lead you into a prayer. And I'm just going to ask you to take one extra step since I can see you, and that's to simply raise your hand. I won't embarrass you, ask you to come forward or stand up, but I want to agree with you. And so if you're in our worship center at this 10 o'clock service and say, Pastor Jeremy, I, I, need, I need that prayer. I want to say yes to God. Would you help me? Would you lift your hand, and I will just agree with you and lead you into a prayer that right there in your seat, you can make this connection to God. Anybody at all in this service would say, Pastor Jeremy, would you include me in that prayer? I want to say yes to God. If you're watching us online, I'm going to pray in just a moment for everybody, but if you're watching online and that's your heart, I don't want to miss you even though I, I can't see you, but you could pray something along these lines, and perhaps you didn't raise your hand in this service, but you can pray this as well. Something along these lines like, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I'm a sinner. But would you forgive me? Would you come into my life and clean me from the inside out? Help me to launch out into the deep. Help me to follow you all of my days. Thank you for loving me and for forgiving me. I pray this in Jesus' name. And Father, I want to pray for those who are your disciples. That we as your body of believers, this community here, this space called the Highlands, that we would step out in faith and we would uh, abandon our comfort, that we would uh, look over what is pleasing to us and that we would step out in obedience, that we would exercise faith and that you would bless that in a powerful way. I pray that as a church, that we'd be willing to launch into the deep. That we'd be willing to say, God, I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to go deeper, to grow more, because I want more of you. I want to build my life on you. And so, Lord, we're so grateful that you've given us your son's sacrifice on the cross 
that we can follow after you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.